Hello, it's Richard McCann here. It's the 27th of June 2012 and it's quite a significant day and uh, a day in which I'm inspired myself to make this audio recording. I've not scripted this, I'm just going to speak from the heart but um, and see where we go with it. I'm inspired to make this recording because uh, today we've seen on the news the Queen Elizabeth II meeting with Martin McGuinness, the ex-IRA commander, shaking hands on the news, uh, something that I'm sure most people in the UK in recent years would have been uh, staggered to see and surprised to see but uh, I think it's a significant moment in the whole Northern Ireland peace process and it's a further step forward in that and um, just 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 seeing that uh, event and hearing about it has inspired me to share with you whoever is listening right now uh, my own peace process shall we call it and that is uh, finding peace in relation to the murder of my mum 36 years ago and and how I feel about uh, how she died and and at the hands of who she died uh, in particular Peter Sutcliffe uh, the Yorkshire Ripper and it's something that obviously has has been with me for most of my entire life Uh, happened when I was five and for the majority of my life it has been something that has caused me uh, you know immeasurable problems but uh, you know but, but I've had be fair to say, lots of anger associated with how I feel about him, um, wanting revenge, wanting him killed, you know, um, even considered, you know, wanting to bring back the death penalty, in my early years anyway. But uh, in, in, in in trying to find peace in myself with where I am in, in life, not just with relation to mum, but everything else, you know, I have been to prison and I've done some things that I'm not proud of, um, I've tried to live a more positive life, uh, I guess in the last 10 years. Which which started with write, writing of my book Just a Boy, and I guess liberating myself and, and finding some peace w- with something that I was always ashamed of, and um, and, and writing uh, writing about uh, what happened and how it affected me was was a weight off my shoulders, and it was like shedding a skin, and and during that process of trying to do good and you know getting involved in certain charity work etc., I, I've always considered. Um, not always, sorry, from that point on, was beginning to consider just whether or not I could forgive Peter Sutcliffe for doing what he did to my mum, for taking my mum, uh, you know, the security that I had uh, all those years ago from me. And with my limited kind of understanding of uh, what the right thing to do is, I, I, I thought that maybe it was, uh, if, I could, if I could get him to show some remorse, for what he did, then maybe I, I could forgive him. Who knows? Uh, so what I did was I wrote to Peter Sutcliffe and sent him a copy of my book, just so that he could see and fully understand just what impact it had on me, just just me personally, let alone my siblings and let alone all those other families that were affected. I just wanted him to, I wanted him to know about how I how I was affected, and it wasn't something I wrote in anger. Uh, there was there was absolutely no anger whatsoever in the letter that I sent him, and because I didn't show any remorse, or sorry, because I didn't hear back from him, and received the letter I was you know, naively possibly hoping for, I put forgiveness um, in relation to him anyway uh, to one side, but it has always oh sorry since writing my book anyway it's been hovering around my uh, ether or the ether for me or, or my the forefront of my mind because um, part of the work that I now do as a speaker is I go uh, into various prisons for the forgiveness project from time to time and share my story and then raise the question uh, or share my opinion of forgiveness and whether or not it's something I've done or I'm prepared to do or would even consider and uh, it it always been no I haven't forgiven but uh, being involved in that for so many times, I don't know how many times I've spoken of them, maybe a dozen times in various prisons, um, and, and hearing other people's stories and you know, and and seeing the impact that forgiveness can have on people, it's, it's always been there, um, sorry, since 2000, say, say 2005. But it wasn't until 2000 and, what was it, 2010, about two years ago, that um, it came back uh, with full effect, shall we say, because I was invited by uh, Marina at the Forgiveness Project down to this lecture that was being given in London, central London, where they had various uh, people speaking about their opinion on forgiveness and sharing their stories. And uh, it was such a, an incredible occasion and uh, and life-changing and one I'm never going to forget. 
and uh, amongst the other speakers, the the, the 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 I guess the main speaker, and 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 I'm glad he was there was Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who was sharing his experiences uh, in South Africa in the uh, early nineties, and who was speaking about the uh, atrocities, atrocities that took place, and the, in particular the, the truth and reconciliation hearings in which you know uh, various perpetrators of, of of various crimes were, I guess, brought into certain hearings, meetings, call them what you will, and then questions were asked. Not because anyone was going to be prosecuted, but, but just, just to get the, the truth of the situation out there and people could then uh, find a way forward, um, I guess once again, to find their own peace process. And he was describing this particular scene that absolutely blew me away. And it was one of his, one, or one of the Truth and Reconciliation hearings where there was a, a crowd or a, a, a hall full of angry people, people who'd lost loved ones and who maybe had been maimed themselves and a number of military men were brought into this particular hall which Desmond Tutu was presiding over. Now, two years ago this is what Desmond Tutu was sharing with the audience and I was there sat three rows from the front on the edge of my seat I might add, uh, bearing in mind for the last uh, four years or so I've been considering forgiveness and whether it's something I could finally do or whether it's something I should do and he was describing what happened that day and these military men or one of the military men turned around to this being audience and said yes it was me I gave the orders and Desmond Tutu was describing this scene and the, the tension in the hall was like palpable and that you could cut it with a knife the tension and but then this officer turned around and he continued and he said please forgive me which I thought was incredible. But what was far more incredible is what happened next, was that this crowd began clapping slowly, but this clapping spread infectious until they were all clapping and signifying that they had finally forgiven this man, these men, for their crimes. And I'm sat there listening to this. But then I went on to say some other things about forgiveness, which absolutely changed everything for me and I'm going to actually take uh, or allow Desmond Tutu to take up the story here with his final words from this lecture because that was the moment that I stepped into what I describe as no man's land and I'll let him take it up from here. You can't make anybody forgive another and yet when that occurs. It is like saying, I give you another opportunity. To forgive is to say, I give you another chance to make a new beginning. Forgiving is never easy, it's not cheap. For us Christians, you know it cost God the death of God's Son. It isn't anything that you can demand of others. But when it has happened, it has an incredible capacity to change a situation. Wow. Just listen to those words again. Send shivers down my spine. You know, a capacity to change a situation. I've always known I can never turn back You know, the clock of or the hands of time. I can never bring my mum back. But hearing that, two years ago I understood that I have the capacity to change the situation by changing how I felt about what occurred and about how I felt about him and I let it go and it was incredible and um, what actually happened was we were all taught to remain seated while Desmond Tutu left the auditorium but I couldn't help myself I, I got up and I 
ran round to the uh, to the side exit of the hall and ran out of the steps and I, and I stopped Desmond Tutu walking down the steps to his car and I just had to tell him what had taken place, that his words about forgiveness had helped me forgive the person that killed my mum when I was a child and he just threw his arms around me and gave me this hug that seemed to last forever and and then said thank you and no more than that we parted company and and I came home and uh, it was an incredible incredible day and a day I'll never forget and and it's helped me more than just about how I feel about mum's killer Peter Sutcliffe but also in the smaller things in life that occur like the arguments you might have with, with my wife or you know when someone uh, a driver cuts you up on the road where in the past you would have looked really angry about it even when they don't know you're angry about it uh, and uh, I'm able to let things go much more easily uh, having done that um, two years ago and I just wanted to share that story with people because Desmond Tutu sharing his experiences uh, two years ago or back in the early 90s anyway but I heard it two years ago helped me on my peace process, shall we say again, and uh, I just thought there might be people out there that might like to hear this and it might help them uh, take a step closer to where they would like to be. I'm Richard McCann, you can get all of me on richardmccann.co.uk and you can find out more about the Forgiveness Project, just, just Google them, you'll find yourself on their website and uh, there's some fantastic and inspirational stories on there. Um, and uh, I wish you well on, with your ongoing journey. Bye for now.